up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com, alongside the Games Alliance. Yeah, buddy. Doug Miller, Core Nutritionals. Sean Torbati, High Performance Nutrition. We're on the balcony. We have a question from Mitchell. He wants to know if he should lose body fat before he starts the bulking process. First of all, none of us are really big fans of the term or the typical definition of bulking where you-, you Not know, the new me. After spending yeah. a week with Juan Morel, going to Five Guys every day. My 600, My 600 pound, pound life. Pound yes. life. My goal is to be a star on that show. I've been on American Grit, I'm going to opposite. Yep. I'm going my 600 pound life. You've been on Fox, now you're going TLC. Yes, I'm stepping down. I just can't down. wait to see the person who's gonna wash you when you're 600 pounds. I think Katie's down. I think Katie, she's, I a, know Katie's she's a ride yeah. or die bitch, man. That's what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I called her a bitch. <laughs> that, was, that was in case, I, if I'm 600 pounds, then you're a bitch. Till then, you're not. <laughs> nice. That's what you need. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> should you lose body fat before you start bulking? If you're talking about getting into a, a lean gaining phase, which is more appropriately termed, then yes, you should. Uh, and the reason why is because the process of learning what it takes to lose body fat, keep muscle, and train hard will teach you a lot about yourself and your diet and how to eat and train. Uh, so it's a great idea to get your body fat under control, also for health reasons. Yeah. You're gonna be, you're gonna have better insulin sensitivity. You're gonna absorb food better. You're gonna have better training endurance. You're gonna have better sexual endurance. Your dick will be bigger. Uh, it looks bigger. Yeah. Like when I'm contest prep, I look like a black man from here down. For sure. Like right now, I look tiny. Yeah. It's horrible. It just depends where you're at. It's then. just a tip. It's, like, it's not yeah. even an impressive tip. So that's the number one <laughs> reason why. Yeah. I mean, just in general, like it, it worries me that they they're talking about thinking that they have to lose body fat, but he wants to bulk, yeah. right? If, if you're actually even thinking about that, you definitely probably need to lose, right? Yeah. Because bulking on top of not already having at least some visible abs, I mean, you're you're probably just gonna go, you're gonna get fat. I mean, straight yeah. up fat, let's be honest. I have a rule of thumb. Um, never start a bulk over 8% body fat. I mean, that's my rule of thumb. Another thing is never get above 15% body fat if you're a bodybuilder who cares how they look. Right. Once, I think, 12 is, in my opinion, for, for growing. I don't like my term bulking. I like term growing or, I don't, again, don't use off season round Doug. It's the grow season. Yeah, I mean, season. so when you're not in a competitive mood or you're not getting ready for the beach or cutting, I think that 12% is kind of the sweet spot. I wouldn't want to see someone go over 15. So let's put it this way, if you start at eight, and we, I think we all are on the agreement that about 0.5 pound a week or two pounds a month of weight gain yeah. is around the optimal zone. I mean, that's even a lot if you think yes. about it. It sounds like, oh, only a 0.5, but like you, you do that for six months, that's 12 pounds of lean mass in a six month period. It's huge. Like, I think that's even a lot, you know? Like, so even a quarter pound, I mean, you gotta be in this, you know, for the long run. Like, if you're just doing a quick bulk for 12 weeks, that's when you get fat. Exactly, so if you start at 12% and you can only get to 15, that's not a long time of being able to grow. But if you start at 8% or even better, 6%, and you just grow slowly, and that's gonna be quality lean mass. And you're more apt to gain lean mass because you can only put on lean mass so fast that's why these people on the dirty bulks, they end up just getting fat, they get ready for their next show, and they didn't gain any lean mass, because by the time you lose all that crap that you put on so fast, you just can't stay in a surplus for that much longer. So I like slight surpluses and a long period of time. Keep in mind, Sean's been training over 10 years, we're in the 20 year range. Like, this is a marathon, dude. Yeah. It's a marathon, that's why these 12, 20 year olds, well, I can't gain size like Doug Miller, so obviously, blah, blah, blah. It's like, he's been doing this for 20 years. If you actually look at how much weight he's gained in the past 10 years, it, statistically, it's not that great. But like, I don't think I've really gained any weight in the past 10 years. Yeah, really. I mean, just maybe a little better. bit, yeah. I mean, you've obviously, your, your yeah. composition, yeah, your yeah. fullness, and, but I mean, this is a guy who lives the lifestyle 100% has done it for, for so many years, but that's what I wanna look at, man. It's not about short-term gaining, it's about long-term. It actually, you know, it's almost like throwing that kind of that weight gain number out the window and just being in a slight surplus where your weight's maintaining almost. And, and you gains, feel good in the gym. Yeah, like you feel training, great. You're good recovering. Energy. The good thing, you want to make sure you're waking up with morning wood. If that's not happening, something's wrong. And hopefully there's someone next to you to help you with that morning wood. Guy or girl. It doesn't matter. matter. We don't discriminate. Yeah. Uh, but you want, to, you want to feel great, be able to recover from your training and be in a position to grow. But if you're, you know, trying to micromanage the scale and looking for gains every week, in terms of gaining two pounds, three pounds, you can get caught up in going in the wrong direction. But if you just let it roll over time and focus on strength, yeah. I mean, I think that's the key 
when you're doing a, a, a growing phase yeah. is focusing on getting stronger, not just through absolute weight, but more reps, more sets, adding like if volume. If you're gaining weight and you're not getting stronger in, in terms of volume, yeah, you know, you're, like, you're probably gaining body fat. Yeah, and, and also, I'd just like to add before we get out of this, a lot of people ask after videos like this, what supplements can I take to aid in getting more calories? People have to bulk. Um, Doug has Core Grow, which is an amazing um, weight gainer. I have Epic Gains, both using whole food ingredients. Yeah. And if you're looking to increase protein, says this Sean just came out PA7, which is amazing. We've been taking it for the last couple of days, and our pumps and the way you can feel your, you can just feel something's going on there. So I'm really excited about that one. Yeah. So you need to be in a calorie surplus. Great whole food based meal replacements with great carb sources like the Epic Gains or like the uh, Core Grow are the way to incorporate those calories in if you have a hard time getting them in. If you have a slower metabolism, you may not even need it. Just with simple whole food, you may grow. But uh, those are excellent options if you're in a hurry. Using it as a substitute for a couple meals mm -hmm. of your day, it's, it's excellent. I'm gonna link all three of those down below, but take a look at PA7. That's some groundbreaking, groundbreaking ish right there. So that's it. Basically, you just need to slow down and realize Rome wasn't built in a day, your body won't be either. And that's not a game.